Hello, welcome to PAP, Public Access Poetry. Tonight we offer you a, a narrow variety uh, in the program. We're doing an all sonnets program, and quite a number of poets are here to read their sonnets for you, so you get to see what it's all about. Tonight I'm going to read Bob Rosenthal's uh, two poems by him because he couldn't be here tonight. This one is called Rude Awakenings. The man who sits on the bottom step and sees the world as he did when toddling stands up still with the child eye. It will take time for this to grow up. A seed moment quietly dents his face. A wind of solid color pushes out the skin. The horseshoe spot ages the autumn green before yellow and total waste. There is no greater disgrace for him than to be untoward to the one he loves, and love is bitter refuge. The truth peeks around the corner. He kicks the trees in their yellow and orange dress. He idles badly, a crank without a case. To be remembered in love, a clear, molting sensation. And this next sonnet is called Rubber Fire. Our thoughts with others do not pursue us, though they wait on the way to home and city, to join in the group as a leaf seeks membership in the earth. The color orange is watchful, the color yellow is waitful, and brown is restful. The autumn shades form a crest which floats like a razor through the mind. To pick up a little happenstance in the ears and leave a prayer behind under the sod where the earth does turn in a constant heat. The leaves are more turned around John Nettleton's though his small red trailer is gone like him to his star, the deaf lumberman who heard music at his son's wedding. After this going heel already points the toes of coming back with more feet than we had before. Okay, next, the next reader will be Barbara Barg. Hi, my name is Rosalind Carter and I'd like to read uh, two sonnets. First one is Sonnet for Sophia. And here we have the king of Spain in his foolish gilded coat, pink blue sashes quite inane adorn that breast, stiff and remote. And Queen Sophia with her smile so full of holes, her royal eyes can turn the hardest stone to bile, then flash aghast as in surprise when peasants grapple at the gate and of their dreary lot complain, Sophia tells them such is fate, for God has made her queen of Spain. When Jesus died to save your soul, he left Sophia in control. The second one is Concrete Sonnet. A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jim Brody. <laughs> Homeward bound. As flames are drawn from turbines roar, the gypsy life reprocesses from wads of bullets and plaster. Where in darkness can I wander from to be homeward returning the poet impolite among iambics? To play with such a tangle living in breath out there Oh, as feelings lift the line from the page and throw the words like knives into a passing sideshow, point blank, the black rings of tape measure mark off my despair, audible among the blurs of lassoed sonatas in static air. The shrubs multiply, ranked and freckly sweat, miles of stretched palpitating flares are lit to amble. I am meadow sweet in the torn and blooded shirt of my father's, and the orange peel sword hilt of my countrymen who went this way, homeward bound, 
to blow the dust from my family crest with my cup. <laughs> I'm Bob Holman. Uh, I have some uh, Petrarchan sonnets. They're all 10 years old. Formal. Again, again like a bad cold, the phone brings you a laugh. I had hoped it done, forgot, already thrown out the bad days, laugh. I had shot them down, hard work, the shaking out of things known or thought known. The new poems of you were shown around, and friends noticed a change. New wallpaper I got at cheap stores, laugh. New paint, perhaps soon. I hold the phone taut and hard. The images are clashing. Damn work's blown. OK, I hear you. You cry, I'm sorry. My voice is lame. I know, I don't know. Fuck, these memories saturate like some clammy injection. Poet talk, right. But these silences achieve. I want to be softer, nothing. Let me cry, leave me, no. Yes, look, I'm tired, it's late. Yes, I do, I hear you. Your voice sounds the same. Olive Sonnet. Your presence was felt before your yoga pose was seen. And also, I knew your voice before you spoke. It was not too long before all these fancies were tossed aside, however, as real as you wanted, the cost being even a barter. That was the way you wanted it. I should have been wiser, waited a few. I didn't. Impulses like that won't be lost. So advise me now, now that your voice is familiar and your moves cataloged. I can listen to your words without hearing them, and besides, the ones I make up fit better. Please me more. You see, you as you want to be is so certain that you as you seem to me must be the liar. Happy sonnet. Wow. I mean, I can make myself so light that my I have to put weights in my shoes to walk. I have to suppress a slight smile to listen, answer cues, carry on the day to day. My secret makes me a bit uptight. I have to be careful, especially in parting, make sure my friend's out of sight before chuckling weightlessly, bringing back the yellows, throwing out the blues of typicality. I feel like that confident Casanova who woos the maid. Being light is godlike. You try it. It might change things. You can still keep, if you find them worth saving, some of the old habits. I can still make love if I concentrate all the weight in one area takes the wear off feet, and hats aren't needed. Clouds do, so you save money, and that's one thing worth saving. It's like children who are late and can't speak, but smile and tug the string so their balloon's waving. Thank you. I'm Daniel Krakow. I have a son in year old about 10 years ago. Astos. I hope that I shall never write a sonnet about Astas because I like them too much and I'm afraid to louse it up, make it too corny or something. Maybe it's their blue. It always reminds me of summer lightning when I was a kid. <coughs> Shit, now I've done it. Or maybe it's because my mother liked them and that's one of the few things I remember about her. Now I hope that no one ever gives me any Astas because what if I'm old or absent-minded and don't recognize them anymore? That would be too embarrassing, like someone always carrying on about the music of Richard Strauss. And when they finally play something by Strauss on the radio, he thinks it's Wagner. <laughs> This poem was written about two or three hundred years ago. Uh, my name is Steve Levine. The bad season makes the poet sad. 
dull to myself and almost dead to these, my many fresh and fragrant mistresses. Lost to all music now, since everything puts on the semblance here of sorrowing. Sick is the land to the heart, and doth endure more dangerous faintings by her desperate cure. But if that golden age would come again, if smooth and unperplexed the seasons were, and when the sweet Maria lived here, I should delight to have my curls half drowned in Tyrian dews, and head with roses crowned, and once more yet, ere I am laid out dead, knock at a star with my exalted head. I'm Greg Masters. I wrote these two sonnets on my summer vacation. Oregon. Beer, headphones connected to Miles Davis, this pen in hand, before I didn't know what bliss was. The trees didn't give it to me, the quiet of that green scene didn't, thinking about a girlfriend 3,000 miles away had settled me quite a bit, but now was far from that. Time air with me through the centuries. Outside belonged to whoever wanted it. My 25 years were inside on a sofa, appreciating style and form. A capacity to propagate word images, heading for blends like these chords, flagrant colors. Wyoming. The van keys hanging loose from the ignition as the day begins, though Tomek and Jeff remain settled in their sleeping bags. Jim, on a 6.30 safari into the cow field, goes beyond postcard dogma. I'm watching him disappear like a speck through the front window of this van gone off the highway to the edge of some farm in America. The bird sounds are a random symphony, including a lot of percussion, as that woodpecker's one measure concerto solo echoes still, a highlight like a cymbal crash. This is straight ahead jazz, no form, only my presence, which to this scene is adorned. I'm Alice Notley. I'm going to read a few uh, sonnets from a sequence called 165 Meeting House Lane. This is number one. I dreamed of a clipper ship, gold on blue, the chasey Alice. Until he'd seen which captain you said he'd seen nothing. I woke bold, chased you to get caught in the hold. Back to sleep, two nightmares, solid ones down, not to be told. Woke not wanting to be in life, wasn't outside warmed, to my blood clean cold quickened, on the way to town for food and back for you, though I was still a little sulky and grim, so you fucked me back in. Eleven. Sometimes you asleep, I go there to be with you. Love's my lazy streak, I'll love away awake when I get true. Jimmy dozes too upright near a fly. Fairfield says doesn't exist, looking for Chris and Chris nearby. She's highest on the wall, skin drier than mine, which sticks to a briar. Love like a street junk crier. I want, and it's not a fly, a fix from the lovely lastingness bag of tricks. Fifteen. Time of Dress warmly, 3 a.m. walk, coat over sweater, shawl over hair, boots over slippers, snow on and over all. I forgot to mention I'm drunk, martini and piece of toast. I think our traffic signal's remarkable in the air. Two wires and two streets cross exactly there. I cross on green the snow, making tracks to a white beach, a long time sliding into bed, reaching to feel you in place, in place I with snow on my hair, on the sheet. 16. Hour less close to feeling bad and restless. Spent bath, food, and drink while you've been sleeping. Now reading, I hear you walking past my door shut and back to bed. No words, none needed. How can I think of what's not done when there's an easy doing always now between us? As we're going each, if we reach, there are words too and walks and books together, tether we pull tighter after. It turns surprising into the prize for staying at it. See, there are some sometimes prizes that aren't lost when found out. 
and it isn't even like winning, which is what gets to be being over fast. It's like being and spreading and air we're breathing. My name is Simon. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter, his scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the heart of kings. It is attributable to God himself, and earthly power doth then show like as God's when mercy seasons justice. I, then, uh, I haven't written haven't a sonnet here, but I have a thing called a son, which is sonnet without the T, because it doesn't have a uh, resolving uh, whatever. <laughs> this is a son. Where do you go when you go away? You don't really go away, do you? Want to? dance the tango in France, dance with Valerie by the Seine, or you just need to be alone, but you don't say so. Everybody thinks you're sick, in need of something strong. Well, these things get around before the one who has the strongest will confront you. More petit. Michael Scola. Heroism. You chuckle alone, throat beats, blood that intensifies emptiness. Day is well, wheels a hammer cleat, spiked something moodless. Sure, tramps walk gaining by. All the same, you recognize a coat. What unknown territory is priestly? Germane vision your head promotes. A loud engine in a shack. There's quiche in spotless heaven and sack to trade and plenty of Gaelic, though bodiless, uneven. Death from time and love, a sheet separate, like you, loosely wrapped, nothing to do with it. Hope. Beings are specks on missions that instantly nerves exhaust. Aptly scandalous halt is fission condemning coquetry's class toss. Crone horns criticize, a lily-white blemish concentrate. On reserve banter, Moliere lies, whatever verses summon relate. In bubbling concrete, thine security is snarl beyond shame, useless because novel, define the meritorious and delicious tame. A plan escapes, partisan, fell of chest, Reminding, unambiguous nor blessed. Paranoia. <laughs> a futility, all the sermons equivalent. Opposed to dreary technique, responsive, glossy. Ache, skein, gratuitous, sieve meant. Profess, it's not rosy. Claim on public opinion is a key. My clavichord senses experience Geneva specialties of nameless, chained into correspondence. Free to merge, shut up, abnegate, please. Chamber music obvious. I found out my lies, tomorrow's action. Will the better part oblong by the sea, nefarious. Alligator tears challenge, quickie nightmare, levitating Mexi burger torso. Where, Yankee doodle, spring must arrive with regenerative care. <laughs> Jeff Wright. Let's see. <clears throat> Apple sausage in the wind. A dull candor perfumes and spoils the air. A heavy gaze into the locked purpose of our genuine defiance. This black and brown quilt is adequate and more. What will do is more too than just an arcane motto. 
But fully does one feel the cluttered buzzing of an autonomous mission. No more a question of patent doubt. Habit is at the heart, pumping regular and blind. Virtue lies in the heartland, excavating minds. We are here precisely to hear the wind. What is caught, friends, is what we send. In the canyons, light comes at a premium. Stifled geniuses continue in black and white to sell their fabled daughters. Luck has come and gone. Its memory is curtailed like a fallen leader behind the Iron Curtain. Who needs luck when they're sweetly doomed? But I'd rather walk than ride in the back seat. And a kiss is worth more than a thousand good put-downs. Even the kiss of death from a downed-out angel is better than the handshake of a corporeal entrepreneur. <laughs> Success is but a scarecrow on the moon alone. Love has nine lives and outlives them all but one. Uh, and I have but one more, I guess. Back to back. The days run off like water saddles on wasted horses working for peanuts. I look for the flower of youth under the chestnut canopy at St. Mark's Church, accompanied by laser guitar beam drive. My friends stand at the mouth of Tunnel City, inviting backwards light to linger on a puff of reefer smoke spiraling thoughtlessly into an anonymous snowfall. We kiss and curse ragged lips and tunnel vision, expiring every available incident with ravenous and exhausting bloodthirst. Making it hold water, another way to leak, chronic glory, and a guest path to the dust. Um, Gary Zenhart. <laughs> and this, this is a collaboration with about uh, five East European guys. <laughs> oh, where are you, great lords of earth, is the title. I mean that sovereign of all plants, the oak, droops, dies, and falls without the lumber industry's saw. So why should you try to stretch life's brief calendar, vainglorious executive, with your digital computers and your luminescent watch dials? Time itself dies in time, like the expanding universe. And you are what time is, except you are less. Your job is merely to count the hours and give a good account. I live in time and out of it, nonetheless. Breath growing heavy, like the snore of aging empire. Content to pinch hit on occasion and go to the opposite field. <laughs> and it's called uh, Buck Rogers, A Shower. Constant bliss in the sun in a window, 1969, written 1848. The leader sets forks on the wrong side of your plate. Watch them eat suave eggs. <laughs> Easy as a person, you seduce me in your movie. Before's wet hair and teeth. Beyond tangible theater, I'm free 1,000 miles away. Definite spring is coming in. Like the robot battalion, beneath my helmet, I question authority. Materialist ideas aren't a raffle. On this reel, I ravish you. Hi, I'm back. Here's a couple of miscellaneous sonnets. Sonnet. You are nameless, cold light, the half-expected. Your body is suddenly a peculiar event. It crinkles in on itself, harsh foil complected of metallic intensity. You won't be split, but if you should, increases, bewitch the heat wing which huddles. Phantasm, you are an extremist, least spent follower, follower of Jesus Christ. I think I better start this one again. You are nameless cold light, the half expected. Your body is suddenly a peculiar event. It crinkles in on itself, harsh foil complected of metallic intensity. You won't be split. But if you should, increases, bewitch the wing which huddles. Phantasm, you are an extremist, least bent follower of persona possessed person. You are the ageless bead, winds the light beaded street, are hot and cold and tense, yet a friend's companion, strength of color, pertaining gesture, meet its dream. The real, unexpressed, be unstrange, 
file everything under human, nothing to derange. Sonnet. The late Gracie Allen was a very lucid comedian, especially in the way that lucid means shining and bright. What her husband George Burns called her illogical logic made a halo around our syntax and ourselves as we laughed. George Burns most, most often was her artful, inconspicuous straight man. He could move people about stage, construct skits and scenes, write and gather jokes. They were married as long as ordinary magic would allow, 38 years until Gracie Allen's death. In her 50s, Gracie Allen developed a heart condition. She would call George Burns when her heart felt funny and fluttered. He'd give her a pill and they'd hold each other till the palpitations stopped. Just a few minutes, many times in pills, as magic fills, then fulfilled must leave a space. One day, Gracie Allen's heart fluttered and hurt and stopped. George Burns said unbelievingly to the doctor, but I still have some of the pills. Jim Brody got magically struck down by a vomit uh, lightning bolt back there, so I'm taking his place. This is a sonnet. The eyelash of tears on an emerald cheek of chance blessing smile in the windfall dark, bent slowly in to taste the nasty bush and pause held lapping Carmen's dusty sap. Ah, briny petals plunge in smoky beams, their ravished fragrance gleams a sweaty grin, moist, held apart by trembling teeth to exercise those foamy buds. Black disks of sunlight swirl upon furry, <laughs> furious, <laughs> furious broiling drool. Ah, flaming moisture bulbs gargle a muffled oath to gasp tiny sucks of air between floods of lathery gush. The juice stain pours on rosy manhood seed to crack those fur-filled crevices with release. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> Another poem by a dead poet. Delight in disorder. This is the same dead poet. A sweet disorder in the dress kindles and clothes a wantonness, a lawn about the shoulder thrown into a fine distraction, an erring lace which here, here and there enthralls the crimson stomacher, a cuff neglectful, and thereby ribbons to flow confusedly, a winning wave deserving note in the tempestuous petticoat, a careless shoestring in whose tie I see a wild civility, do more bewitch me than when art is too precise in every part.